Neck of femur fractures are typically fractures of the elderly. And the problem with these fractures is that they lack biology. I'd like to show first how I look at an x-ray. This is an AP of a pelvis. And the first thing that I point out usually is that bone is white and air is black. So this would be air and here you see bone. The whiter the bone is, the stronger the bone is. And also the wider the bone is, the stronger the bone is. But having said that, air is black, so these little things that you see here, these are gas bubbles in the intestines. So they're overlying the x-ray. These are not tumors. This is nothing else to worry about. Everybody has them. They move if you take an x-ray at another time. So here we have got the L5 vertebra. That's how I usually start with it. Then I look at the sacroiliac joints. The sacroiliac joints, because there are certain diseases that affect the sacroiliac joints. I look at the iliac crests. Then I look at the acetabulum, I look specifically at the weight-bearing area, but I also look at the entire acetabulum. I look at the pubic rami, and if they are symmetric, because then the x-ray is a true AP, and I look at the symphysis. On the right, femoral neck here, I see some cysts inside there, so this would be maybe a coincidental finding. Then I look at the bone quality. So an easy way to assess the bone quality for me is to look at the difference between the cortex and the medullary and the entire width of the, of the femur in that side. So this one would be the corticomedullary index. So that gives me an indication, is the bone good, is the bone not good? The next thing is to look at is a little bit more difficult. We're looking at these compression lines here. These are lines that go where the weight is. So the weight with every step that you take, just to give you an indication, normal walking has about twice your body weight. So if you weigh 75 kilos, it's 150 kilos. That is the maximum impact when you have heel strike while walking. And this weight gets obviously distributed from the femur, then on the other side to the acetabulum and then to the L5 vertebra. So I'm going to take these two lines away so that you can see yourself on the x-rays here where these lines are. So there's more than one line. And like I said, they cross the acetabulum and they go to the L5 vertebra through the sacroiliac joints. Now having a closer look at these ones here, so there's not only these compression lines, but there's also tension lines. These are tension lines, and they also continue on the other side of the acetabulum. So these little lines, when you look at that, you get a triangle in between them that's called the Ward's triangle. So if this triangle is clearly visible, not in that case, but if it's clearly visible, then that is an indication of softer bone. In other words, osteo parotic bone. Now looking at normal bone, let's say we zoom into that patient's bone here, we would get a pictures like this. This is maybe, that whole picture is maybe 400 nanometers wide. And you see here the trabecular structures and they have not only trabecules going up, so they also have going to the side and to the other direction. So it's a three dimensional construct that they have. And the trabecules itself, they are quite big. It's nice, big, strong, good bone. This is osteoporotic bone. So you see there is connections missing. They're not only the only trabecules are wide enough, but they are also thin and there is the side connections missing. So that lacks definitely stability. So even if you take medication to build up your bone, you will not reform those connections that are lost. So here for this um, neck fractures, we're talking about the neck. So this is the neck area here. And <clears throat> these, between those two lines, this is what the neck looks like. Now, does it really look like that in real life? No, of course not. So we, first of all, we've got the synovial membrane because it's a synovial joint. So that is covered. The second thing is then there's the capsule on top. And on top of the capsules are certain ligaments. So it's not so easy to see where your bone is. Even if you would like to look at it, it's quite tricky to get to that area. But in between here, this is the area that we talk about. Now, why did I say it's a biological problem? Because it has to do with the blood supply. So 10% of the blood supply comes from the endosteal area. So this is the... That would be at the bottom, a nutrient artery here that goes inside there on the femur. That can be up to three. And then the blood comes from the inside. However, if it's broken in that area, those 10% are missing. 
The 10% that are still there is this little artery here that goes through the ligamentum teres. That comes from the internal iliac and goes on the inside of the pelvis through the ligament to the fovea centralis on the femur here. That's where the ligament inserts on that side. So I just took the femur out so that you could see that. The majority of the blood supply is done by this little artery here that is here in purple. That is called the posterior or the medial circumflex art artery here. You see it goes to the back there and actually the majority of blood supply to it comes from the back there. Now again, if there is a fracture, this blood supply is also disturbed. So that's why I say it is a problem of biology. So this artery here gives you 80% of the blood supply. So what about the types of fractures that we have here? Now, first of all, these fractures are relatively difficult to see. This would be an undisplaced one. This is actually one where you fall on the left hip and you break the right side. So it's an abduction fracture. It's a type 1. And it's difficult to see because the x-ray looks almost okay-ish. But when you look at these lines that we just spoke about, you see that the lines are actually disrupted. But it takes a little bit of uh, a skilled eye to see that. The type 2 is uh, one that is more displacement, but not fully displaced. But when you look here at this area, here, this is uh, Adam's arch or Shinton's line. And you see there's a small, small disruption inside that one. And um, that indicates also the fracture. The type 3 is by far easier to see uh, because it's more displaced or more rotated away in the type 4 as well. So this classification that we use is uh, the Gordon classification. It's a very old classification from 1961. And um, yeah, it hasn't really changed. There is, there is no difference in this one, but we practically have two big groups. We have displaced and undisplaced fractures. Now, how does it at our institution look like? These are pictures over the years from our institution where we do hip arthroplasty or neck or femur fractures. And you see that we have a steady incline. We obviously do by far more arthroplasty for other conditions of the hip than what we do for fractures, but we do more and more. Now, what do the patients look like, the typical patients? First of all, it's mainly a female patient, so our ratio is almost 2 to 1. The age in year, it's a fracture of the elderly, so this one uh, goes from roughly 67 years of age. And then the time to surgery. Now, this is a little bit, uh, my institution, a little bit different because we do not have a excellent primary health care. So a lot of people actually have other so-called comorbidities, other medical conditions that we have to treat first before we can do any surgery in this case. Now, this could be, for example, that they require a pacemaker or that they uh, require first uh, medical treatment for, for hypertension or for anything in, the, in that area. So that's why this is delayed. Also, most of them, actually all of them, need a cardiac echo before they can go through an anesthesia. The B BMI is the body mass index. So <clears throat> this one is, um, it varies, but it's relatively low. So the reason why it's low is that uh, our metabolic unit coined the phrase, the fat is the third ovary. So people who have an increased body mass index, specifically females, they make uh, um, estrogen inside and that prevents bone fractures. Well, to some extent at least. And uh, so the skinny, the skinny ladies, they get are more prone to fracture. Now, where do our patients come from? We got about 50-50 people that come via the ambulance to us directly, or we get referrals. Most of the referrals are for anesthetic risks that uh, they would like us to do. It's, we are the third biggest hospital in the world, and we are a university hospital. Um, we classify the patients that is very helpful according to the ASA, the anesthesiology classification, that looks at the physiological risk pre-surgery of a patient. So they have got certain con conditions that they look at, and uh, a healthy individual would, have, would be a class 1, and we have class 2 and 3. So they have got uh, comorbidities. All our fractures were displaced. And um, the majority of the fractures that we use, we use cemented hip replacements. That would be the treatment for this. Now, the cement also has problems for the anesthetic, 
But um, it is better for the patient because you practically the fracture is healed after that because you can walk on your cement. So here I would like to show you the typical picture. Um, <clears throat> on the left hand side you see a portable x-ray of a fracture that is happening here. On that side there is the fracture, so like I said it's sometimes a little bit difficult to see. And then on the right hand side you see that uh, after the surgery they had a hip replacement done here on this side. And this is a cemented hip replacement, you actually see after the stem still a cemented um, interface. So this cement works very well because you can directly walk on it. This is the disclosure of um, how I did the presentation. This is the... 3D Medical, uh, Pixelmator, and the keynote presentation from Apple. Thank you.